uh, namaste and good afternoon everyone uh, i welcome you all in this house cost calculator application launch sharing session i am lakshmi prasad bhatta national technical coordination officer in hrrp nepal uh, today i am going to moderate this session let me light a little bit on the objective of the session as you know uh, the topic is house cost calculator application launch program we have organize this program for the wider uh, dissemination of uh, house cost calculator application. Uh, house cost calculator application is a simple web and mobile application developed by HRRP in collaboration with different organizations. Uh, with this brief, uh, now let me discuss today's agenda of the program. Uh, the program is uh, uh, divided in two parts. The first part is about uh, overview and technical feature of the house cost calculator and will be presented by Mr. Deepak Sound, District Management Team Technical Coordinator and Mr. Sachin Maligo, National Information Management Officer from HRRP respectively. Uh, in the second part, uh, we'll take remarks from three eminent personalities who have been, uh, who have been okay, uh, who have worked extensively in the areas of disaster response and recovery. They are uh, Dr. Ramesh Kuragai, uh, Deputy Executive Director of Fianset, Mr. Lauren Lockwood, and Jamie Ditarson, CR CRS Global Center and Settlement Technical Advisor. And uh, we have also here Mr. Uh, I think uh, Jhappar Singh Vishwakarma, sir, Deputy Project Director of Central Project Implementation Unit Building under NRA. We will also take his feedback and concluding, remark, concluding remarks at the end of this session. Uh, after the opening and remarks session, uh, there will be a question and answer session, followed by uh, uh, concluding remarks and vote of thanks. So uh, this is the outline of today's uh, program. Uh, now, without delay, uh, I would uh, like to request uh, Mr. Deepak Sound, uh, uh, first and Mr. Uh, Sachin Maligo to deliver their presentation. Uh, both, both of your time is 40 minutes. Uh, over to you, Deepak ji. Uh, thank you, Lakshmi ji. And namaste and good afternoon, everyone. I am Deepak Sawad. Uh, I'm the technical uh, coordinator at HRP. In this session, I will be discussing about the uh, overview of the house cost calculator. Uh, I'll be using the PowerPoint and I'll be assisted by uh, Sachin Moleguji, uh, who, is, uh, who is assisting me during this session. It will take about 15 minutes of your time in my session and remaining 25 minutes uh, time will be taken by Sachin Moleguji. Who, in his session, he will explain about the technical uh, aspects of the house cost calculator and he will further also show you the the application in a web browser. Uh, and then as Lashmi sir said, in the second part, we'll take uh, three opinions and remarks from three eminent personalities who have been work in the response and recovery. And after the opinion session, uh, there will be question and answer session. Uh, and uh, um, that will be the outline of the, today's program as explained by Lashmi ji. Now, let me start my uh, session with the house cost calculator background. As you know that a house cost calculator is a simple and it's a free web and mobile application that has been created uh, for, the, uh, for the rapid cost estimation of house cost calculator. This is because even in the normal situation where there is non-disaster situation, it is a tedious uh, job to, to calculate the cost of the house. So, uh, it, Especially in uh, especially what happens in post disaster situation, it it becomes even more challenging or it becomes very tedious job to calculate the uh, cost of the house of different housing typologies because there are very uh, very constraints like we have a building typology constraint and time limitation and there's a lack of availability of manpower and other uh, associated complexities. So because of this reason, it even becomes more challenging in the, in the post disaster scenarios. So similar kind of uh, uh, challenges were faced uh, during the 2015 Gorkha earthquake. And that was the time when 
we felt the need of house cost calculation calculator so that that can be used to calculate the housing typology uh, to calculate the cost of the housing base housing typology to speed the reconstruction process and in the next slide also i will also talk about the background uh, sajinji could you please go to the next slide so 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 in 2018 uh, a group was formed which is known as vulnerable support working group and this group uh, again formed a special task force which is called house cost calculator technical working group and the main objective of this group was to develop a, a tool let's say a house cost calculator which is used to to calculate the cost of the house in a very a very short period of time and and to reach to the vulnerable uh, vulnerable household as well as the various stakeholders who are involved in the reconstruction process so the group uh, the, the house cost calculator technology group consisted various representatives of engineers and other uh, different uh, experts uh, from various organizations and this group was led and facilitated by hrp and Finally, uh, this group was able to make a simple web and mobile application in a, in a, in a given timeline with the support of uh, different POs. And I will explain about the contribution of different POs in coming slides. And we are able to, to develop the house cost calculator that rapidly calculates the cost of construction of different housing typologies, which have various shapes and sizes. And that will be shown by the demonstration in, uh, in coming few minutes by uh, Sachinji. And this application also uh, calculates the transportation cost. Uh, this transportation cost is from the vendor's location, from where the, the owner buys uh, different materials and other things from that location to the uh, house owner's uh, construction site. So, so this application even calculates the cost of transportation transportation from vendor's location to the house. So these are these were the some background of the uh, background of the uh, house cost calculator. Now let's move on the next slide. Uh, in the next slide, I will talk about the objective. Uh, the main objective of the the uh, uh, for developing the house cost calculator was to reach to the vulnerable household uh, to provide them affordable housing solution. That that was based on the geography, like in the remote areas, there there were different. Uh, typology houses needed and uh, based on their capacities and preference option uh, the different types of housing solutions were needed uh, and to speed up the reconstruction so that was our initial uh, objective of objective in developing the house cost calculator later we thought that this application is not only useful for the house uh, hold who are vulnerable but it can be used by the technical professionals who are engaged in the uh, national reconstruction authority and this can be equally useful for the other people other individuals like the house owners and similarly the 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 petty contractors or lead mason they can even use the calculator from their mobile or or the individual who who can who knows about the computer they can even go to the computer and they can check the the cost of the calculation of their house so we uh, we decided to make it wider uh, wider for the from technical person to individual who have some skills about the soft, uh, application skills so we we have we our our objective change from limited to the wider people so that was the objective uh, from initial to later. So let's move on to the next slides. So uh, so as you know that house cost calculator is a simple uh, web and mobile application. So it 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 it, it, it consisted of different steps. Uh, in in the in the development of the house cost calculator we have uh, at present four different housing typologies which are uh, stone in one motor stone in cement mortar similarly a hollow concrete block and brick masonry in cement mortar these are the four different typologies of houses houses and in the development of this application uh, we have different steps like we started with collecting different housing types like uh, as i just mentioned four different housing types we collected different housing types of these uh, four typologies and we also collected some drawings from partner organization and from the field engineers and from other stakeholders. And then we prepared the 
drawings, detailed drawings of these uh, these model houses based on the uh, photos available. And we also did the manual quantity estimation. I'll explain about each of these steps in the coming few slides. And then we did the development, uh, developing input logic and way format. And we also did some field testing and we had some series of peer review within our organization as well as with other partner organization. And finally, at the end, we are able to develop the uh, application in wave as well as the uh, mobile application. I will be discussing in detail in a few more slides in the next couple of minutes. So let's go to the next slide, Sachinji. So our application is, uh, as I said earlier, is uh, only uh, for four different typologies at present. Uh, those are uh, stone in mud motor, stone in cement motor, brick masonry in cement motor, and uh, hollow concrete block. And these four different types of um, uh, different types of housing typologies consists of thirty one various models. And these thirty one models uh, even consist, uh, if we disaggregate it, it 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 it, it has some models are in with attics and some without attics and in some uh, models we have also considered the uh, wooden bands like the seal band little band and other stages we have taken for reinforcement as well as the for the wooden band so these are different 31 models in our uh, in our house cost calculator and all the house uh, all the models that uh, we have made they are based on the nepal national building code nvc 202 and 203 so the cost as estimation is also done as per the national build, nepal national building code 202 and 203 and our application is uh, application had taken the district rates of, of the most earthquake affected district like the 14 different uh, earthquake affected district from Kathmandu to uh, to uh, Mukmalpur from eastern part Sinduli to western part um, Kaski so all these districts are there their district rate are there and even if the customer wants uh, I mean the the user wants to customize the rates and they want to input the other the the detail of the material and the detail of the uh, detail of the skill manpower, they can even uh, do that manually. So both options are there uh, by default, as well as the uh, custom, custom customized uh, options, both are there to provide the cost information. And even the, the, the user can even detect the cost, like the, uh, the user, if they, want, they even want to involve themselves as a labor or they have the salvage material from their house, like stone or wood, or let's say, uh, breaks, they can detect that cost. So our application uh, has these facilities and about these, faci these, uh, these facilities uh, in, in the demonstration section, uh, Sachinji will discuss in detail about how this can be done uh, ma uh, manually as well as how this can be added or deducted uh, while demonstrating through the web browser. Uh, let's uh, talk more about the scope and limitation in the next session, N uh, next slide. Like, our uh, our uh, application is now uh, only have four different uh, housing typologies, but it is open for other housing typologies. Like we can even add RCC structure in the coming uh, days. And similarly, if any organization provide us detail about uh, the uh, let's say CSCB uh, typology, they can if they just if they just give us about the detail estimation in our format. Similarly, uh, the architectural drawing and 3D model, other information in our format, then we can add that uh, that um, typology in our application. So it is open uh, and easily added for other typologies and. And we hope that uh, in the coming uh, days or in the coming future, we can even uh, do the retrofitting cost calculation. So it is possible to do for retrofitting cost calculation in our application. So we can even do that in our application in the coming days. And uh, this application is most effective in emergency and recovery period for quick calculation, like uh, for emergency shelter. It should be it should be done very fast, so our application can be very helpful at that at that time. And we believe that this application is not only for the emergency period; it can be used in non-disaster situation. Like if some mass uh, mass construction of this uh, small type of houses is need to be done in different parts of the world, then anyone can use our application, and this can be done uh, in 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 very uh, less time compared to uh, other things. So this this is open to this. So we have uh, we have also uh, 
we also think that it is applicable in other part of the wall with adaptation. So this is the scope and limitation. Uh, so uh, this uh, development of this uh, application is a very collaborative approach where various organizations uh, contributed in developing uh, this application. So some of the main organization like uh, HRRP uh, initiated the initial from the initial phase it uh, started uh, uh, supporting the input and concept from and overall coordination among the partners. So HRP was related to that. And NSAID contributed it from, uh, from technical uh, phase. So uh, NSAID provided all the estimation, drawing, and 3D model of the uh, models and other technical support also done by the NSAID. And similarly, CRS uh, supported uh, in, in a financial and logistic way. So uh, this was the CRS, uh, how CRS helped. And, other technical working group member like PIN, Build Change, and Build of Nepal also supported uh, in the development process of our application. They provided us district uh, construction rates and different designs and field testing of the app. So this is how various organizations were involved collaboratively in development of this application. Uh, so these are the various different typologies which, uh, which uh, we use in the application. So you can see uh, the four different typologies from stone in mud motor, stone uh, stone in cement motor, hollow concrete block, and brick in cement motor. These are the different typologies uh, which have uh, which have attic, uh, which have baranda uh, and without baranda, and some have attic and without attic. So let's move on to the next few few more slides. So we collected the different uh, housing typologies based uh, based on the available uh, based on the the reconstruction which were on the field. So these are some of the photos. Uh, based on this, we we had the length, uh, dimension of the house and we checked all the information from that. Let's go to the next slide. And we did all the drawings, uh, so drawings of the houses that were required. And uh, in the, uh, go to the next slide. So similarly, we prepared the manual quantity estimation of each slide. So we have 31 different uh, estimation in detail uh, to, to for the validation purpose. So we have backup calculation. So when we do the field testing, we have everything in our hand. So let's go to the next slide. And we have some done field testing. As you can see on the screen on the right hand side, uh, there is a there is a field testing done by our SRP team and we are doing on the field testing on the brick masonry motor. So right now various stakeholder uh, various stakeholders from partners are using, and so far 23 users have registered for the application, and 196 projects have been created. And in uh, some uh, next slide, and we have been continuously doing this, uh, the, this updating this our application. We have been doing internal reviews and feedback, as you can see on the left hand side. We, we are doing internal review and feedback, and similarly, we have been doing. Uh, various sharing sessions, which you can see on the right hand side with partner organization where we are getting different feedback and uh, feedback and application other information. So now uh, I would like to request uh, Sachin Moleguji to provide technical demonstration, technical detail of the application and and provide the demonstration uh, on the web browser. Thank you. Thank you sir, for uh, the presentation. Uh, that's quite. Uh, 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 many other things were covered in your presentations as well on how the history of uh, houses calibrator has been going on. Uh, well, I, I guess uh, I need to welcome Lauren as well today. Uh, he has been a part of SRP for a very long time. And Jenny as well, who has been uh, engaged uh, in this uh, houseless calibrator from the very beginning uh, of its development. Uh, so I'm uh, walk you through uh, through the uh, basics of uh, how the house cost calculator looks like first of all, and then we'll be having a short demo of how you can uh, level your own uh, projects in the house cost calculator. So this is the dashboard for the house cost calculator. This is the basic dashboard for house cost calculator, where you'll be seeing uh, the number of projects that you have made under different typological sections, as well as the housing locations uh, for uh, for the projects that you have created by locations. The second slide is uh, for creating a new project. Uh, the third one over here is after you've created a new project, you'll have to fill in the uh, form for the housing dimensions, the vendor locations. And when you submit this, you will be getting a full-fledged report on how the, uh, what, what will the cost for the house, as well as uh, you can select your own custom locations uh, uh, rate 
You can select your vendor location from the default and after the project has been created, this is what you'll be seeing in your project window. Like um, you'll see the client information, you'll see the estimated cost along with labor cost, material cost, transportation cost, and also the bill of quantity, rate list, and other various details of the project as well. So this is the, these are the project details on uh, BOQ uh, estimation, the contribution that will, be, uh, that will be made, the transportation cost summary, and the material and uh, cost summary as well. So I'll just uh, take you to the, the link uh, where you would like to go for building up your first project in the hospice calculator is calculator.app. So when you go into the link, you will be seeing a login window. So the login window is not compulsory for everyone. If you want to log in as a guest, you can log in as a guest or you can create your own new account from over here. It's a very simple process of creating your own, creating your account. You just have to type in your name, your email address and the password that you prefer. So after that, you can go back to your login and you can log in from here as well. So I'll be logging from my one or you can log in as a guest as well if you don't want to create your uh, user username or if you do not want to register as a user. So I log in with my uh, user account. So if you are logging in as a uh, guest, you will not be getting a profile settings uh, part as um, part uh, because in the profile settings part, what you can do is you can change your pictures, you can uh, change your passwords and everything in the profile settings sections. In the dashboard, you will be seeing the number of projects that you have created till now. The projects where you have created the projects in the housing location sections, you'll be seeing uh, the uh, parts and projects uh, that you have created at different locations. And over here in the recent project sections, you will be, uh, there will be a list of the projects that you have created till now. So the first thing that you can do from here is you can create new project right from here as well, or you can go to the projects dashboard, projects dash where you'll be seeing all your projects over here and you can create new project from here as well. So after you create, after you have clicked on the create new project, what will happen is you'll be getting this pop-up window for creating a new project. So over here, what you can do is with the, you can choose what kind of model houses are you building. Is it a wooden van, is it without attic, or is it with attic? So for now, I'm choosing the default one with attic and different housing typologies like SMM, Stone in Montmortal, or SMC, or you can go to HCB, or you can go to BMC. And under, even under this, you have different housing typologies. So it can be without attic, it can be with attic. So you can do that one as well. So for now, I'm in uh, Stone in Mon Motor. I'll be choosing the two room without veranda for now for the demonstration purpose. Uh, the province that I'll be choosing is for now is Bagmati. So after you choose the province, you'll be seeing a location over here. This is the central map locations. You can change your locations from dragging this uh, pin wing, location pin icon over here. So I'll be dragging it to some place over here. For now, I can keep the uh, user, the client name that we are, uh, you are creating the project for, the address, and the contact number. I'm just giving uh, a random contact number over here. So you can click on next. After you click on next, what you'll be seeing over here is the information of the housing typology, the typology that you have selected, the model that you have selected, and the type that you have selected. Is it with attic, without attic, or is it a wooden, wooden bank? So down over here is the vendor location. I'll uh, be talking more about that in a while. Uh, so the length first, you can choose the length of the L1. So length of L1 over here, how long or how, wide uh, will the room be? And the length of B is the, how, uh, like, like how long will the uh, length of uh, your room will be? So after that, you can choose the uh, length of L2 as well. So if you, what happens if you choose something uh, drastic, like if you choose five, or if you choose some, uh, some uh, something less of a number that can be implemented over here, you'll be receiving an error message instantly for that one. For now, I'll be keeping this one. For the cost type, you can go to custom cost type and you can 
customize your cost type as well, or you can choose the default cost type that we have provided. In the vendor locations now over here, I can choose my vendor location from where I'll be uh, getting much of my supplies for, uh, from uh, for building the house. For now, I'll be choosing it from somewhere uh, over here. I'll be choosing it over here, and I'll be submitting my form for creating a new project. So after I submit my form, you can see over here, the client, uh, the location of the client is over here. On the right hand, uh, on the right hand side, you can see the housing, the house dimensions, uh, like I choose 12 feet for uh, the uh, B1, for L1, I choose 10 feet, and for L2, I choose 10 feet. So the total area of the house, you can see over here in square meters. After this, what you can see over here, other thing is the transportation cost over here. The transportation cost has been calculated already. The labor cost and the material cost, the total material cost that, that, it, that it will include and the total cost for the house as well. So what you can do over here is as well, you can uh, contribute to the cost as well. So if I have uh, skill labor and I have uh, the skill labor for like five days, I can choose five. And after I save changes over here, what it will do is it will add your contributions to the total cost and it will de deduct your total cost as well. And you'll be getting a much more uh, estimated, much more concrete estimated data uh, of, of for cost uh, for building your house. So from here, the other thing is construction of material cost. This is the major section where, mo where most of the calculations is being done. Uh, so what will be the cost for building a house? What will be the required unit for building a house? What will be the required unit of stone? How much aggregate will you need? How much sand you will be needing? So everything has been calculated over here. The unit rate cost is our default cost over here. You can change this default cost as per your wish in the custom sections over here as well. So you, and you can also see the cost uh, for those materials, the cost that will be incurred for those materials as well over here. So after this, what you can do over here is you can go to the bill of quantity. So you can see the overall calculations for bill of quantity over here. That takes a lot of time for you to do in Excel reports. So this is calculated automatically from our service side, from all the uh, information that we have provided in the uh, user interface at the very beginning of creating a project. We also have a rate list. So you can see the rate list and you can change the rate list from here as well. So if you know that uh, the skilled uh, labor does not cost 1500 at my place, but it will cost only 1000 per day at my place. So you can change it over here and you can submit it and it will be updated in your project list as well. So everything that we have over here can be changed. So the other thing is, if you can to see all the details, you can see all the details for your project as well, for the material and cost summary in the material and cost summary section, the 3D model of the housing. You can download this page as well, or you can download any pages that we have just seen, like this one. You can download it in, in your PDF format and you can see it as well. And you can make corrections to your uh, information or you can make corrections to your housing need as well. So after this, we also have the transportation sections over here. So the transportation sections over here is like, uh, it is for only 10 kilometers. So the total charge will be a little bit less. It is being calculated uh, again. Uh, so the total kg, total weight of the uh, material that needed to be, needs to be transferred is over here as well. And the contribution that you have made is down over here as well. The other thing that you can do after making your own profile is you can manipulate the market cost, market rates as, market rate as well. So if you know the market rate for uh, districts like uh, Sindhu Palso or Sinduli or anything, you can go to the sections and you can change the market rates as per your need as well. And this will be saved for you throughout the uh, session as long as you are in the dashboard or you are creating your project. So it will be easier for you to uh, make your calculations uh, as per your settings as well. So in the dashboard section, after you have created your project, like I have created my one project, so you can see that I have my project over here, the locations where I have created my project over in the location section, and the number of projects that I have created is over here. 
or you can go to the project section and you can see it over here as well. You can later on as well as view the details or you can edit it and you can make new amendments to your projects as well. So currently I'm not making any amendments, so I cancel the process over here. So I guess that is all that we have for now from the project sections in the Hausos calculator. Uh, I hand it over to Deepak sir for, for the presentations. Thank you Deepak sir and thank you everyone for being here and for your very precious time. Thank you. Uh, thank you Sachinji for your demonstration and uh, discussion. Uh, now we are at the end of our presentation and this is our last slide. And in this, uh, in this slide, I would like to talk about way forward. Uh, well, we have initiated the house cost calculator application. However, it needs to be, uh, it, I mean, it's not complete yet. It's, a, it's an ongoing process. So it needs to be updated in a regular basis. So in order to update it, uh, I would like to request everyone to work. Uh, let's work together and let's, ma let's, let's make it more efficient and effective. So I would like to request everyone, let's work together. Uh, in other words, let's, let's work together uh, for this journey. Therefore, I would like to request uh, everyone to share uh, your experience after using uh, this application. We'll share the link uh, from where you can easily, uh, easily use this application it, uh, and uh, it would be grateful if you could uh, could uh, if you could provide us the the provider so whatever challenges you you face or whatever challenges challenges that occurs uh, while using this application and uh, mm -hmm. we will be will be you will will take them and make the application better so that uh, so that the application will be more effective and uh, and productive and will be very useful for everyone with this, I would like to conclude our uh, presentation here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening uh, to us for 40 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Deepakzi and Kutunji, for, uh, for the comprehensive presentation. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have any question, please write question and comment on the chat box. We will discuss in Q&A session. Uh, now, we have a, uh, an opinion, uh, we have an opinion and remark session. Uh, as I announced earlier, we have here three eminent personalities in the areas of disaster response and recovery for their opinion and op opinion and remarks. Uh, firstly, uh, as the ANSET is one of the key partner organization that has been involved in development of house cost calculator from the initial phase. Uh, so now I would like to uh, request uh, Dr. Ramesh Kuragai sir for his remarks on this. Uh, Dr. Ramesh has been working as a deputy executive director at National Society for Earthquake Technology in Nepal and said, since 1999 in the field of earthquake risk management. Earthquake risk assessment of building infrastructure and urban rural settlement in Nepal and the South Asia, South Asian region is, is the one of the major program area that he is leading for and said recent year. Uh, over to you, Ramesh, sir, for your remarks. Thank you very much, Lasmiji. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it seems that the professor is still not there. Good to uh, see Jamie and Lauren here in the, the panelists also. Uh, first of all, congratulations to HRRP for this uh, noble work and successful completion of this uh, uh, housing uh, calculator. Uh, in terms of the importance of this type of the tool, uh, there is no doubt that it is really helpful and important uh, during you know, the rehabilitation and reconstruction. Uh, and also as Deepak Ji mentioned, and this tool can be used even for the, in the normal situations for uh, calculating the cost for, especially for the rural buildings. Uh, this was uh, a true collaborative work uh, in the real sense, let's say. I uh, would like to thank uh, CRS, uh, PIN, Build Change, Built Up Nepal, and all other partners for providing uh, support, uh, you know, the, uh, all the informations, logistics, financial support, 
and also to UK aid for uh, supporting the overall uh, activities. Uh, would like to thank from on behalf of the NCET and from my personal behalf also to all the organizations and individuals who got involved in this process. <clears throat> As Deepak ji and Sachin ji mentioned, uh, this is in a way a start. Uh, I would say late start because if this type of the tool was there uh, at the beginning, uh, perhaps you know the many partners would utilize this in a better way, where we had to you know support many households, uh, all of us in different uh, locations for Nepal reconstruction. But at the same time, uh, as I personally also involved uh, in terms of some technical discussions. I see the potential that this tool can be used in other countries as well for the simple buildings, you know, for the reconstruction, not for the complex, you know, the commercial buildings or reinforced concrete buildings, multi-story type, but, you know, if it's a single or two-story buildings and then it's a simple rectangular buildings, one room or two room with limited number of, you know, the doors and windows and others, I think despite whatever is the materials and wherever is the conditions, uh, I see the potential of customizing it and using it. So uh, that's, I think, uh, the another huge potential. The second one is definitely, you know, the, in Nepal, uh, many of us are supporting and working uh, with the local governments, supporting municipalities for implementation of the building code, including the rural municipalities where we have the simple buildings. I think this tool can be used even in the normal, you know, the other disaster risk management as well as the other development uh, support activities at the rural areas. From ANSET side, uh, we will continue uh, taking this further as an institution uh, to customize, to use it in our programs and the projects uh, in Nepal and also in uh, wherever we work. Uh, so that it can be, you know, the uh, continuously revised, modified, and then used at the different level. This tool, to my understanding, and also based on the presentation, is for the homeowners. But at the same time, it will be equally, or perhaps even much more effective or important for the partner organizations to uh, use it. Uh, because especially if it's really, really rural area, sometimes they may not have the access to internet and they may not know how to use the applications and others. But for the partner organization, it's perfect because they can design the program. They can actually facilitate through this tool to support the individuals and individual households and there. So in that sense, uh, you know, the uh, global uh, partners like CRS and others can actually uh, support a lot to promote this tool and also help use this tool uh, if required uh, by all the partners globally so that you know the, the customization is there and one part that i like the most is you know the the customization is not only by the technical people but the uh, you know the users also can actually customize uh, can use the new uh, you know the uh, uh, rates can use different forms of the buildings and then the is some sort of the you know and the uh, uh, a sort of ai let's say artificial intelligence you know you you start putting a lot of data and then your estimate will be more refined and defined if there are more cases of the same area so in that sense uh, uh, this has a huge potential uh, to use it uh, globally as well and, but of course, uh, customization is required because the, uh, you know, the, the buildings, the types are basically from our region and then it will be directly useful for many countries, uh, you know, uh, around. But if it, there are very different materials like the timber buildings or other types, then uh, uh, a customization is of course uh, required. Uh, with this, uh, from ancient behalf, uh, we'll say that you know they will take it further. And thanks again to HRRP for the overall coordination, all the partners to support, uh, and then also the individuals like uh, Jamie and Lauren, uh, who provided you know the the concept and also uh, worked as a part of the team in this uh, activity. Uh, thank you, everyone.
Uh, Over to you, Lasmiji. Uh, thank you, sir, for your course and remarks. Uh, now I would request Mr. Loren Lakut for his remarks. Most of us know him. Uh, most of us know him as Loren was the national uh, coordinator of HRRP for the past few years. Loren has contributed a lot during emergency shelter cluster coordinator at Gorkha and Western Hub, and has a significant contribution in establishment and leadership of HRRP team there. Uh, Lauren was uh, one of the members to prioritize joint, uh, joint development of this concept and tool. Uh, I would request uh, Lauren uh, for his remarks. Uh, over to you, Lauren, sir. Thank you very much um, to, to all those involved. Um, and Lakshmi, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, and Deepak and Sachin for the uh, for the wonderful presentation. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. Um, I, I, uh, as Lakshmi mentioned, I, I was involved in the uh, early stages of this and, and quite invested uh, emotionally in the whole process. Um, and it's wonderful to see uh, it come, come to fruition at this point. Um, you know, in, 19, in 2018, um, there was the, the partners uh, working to support the, the most vulnerable in response to the uh, reco recovery process, uh, got together to form the Vulnerable Support Working Group. And with so many issues to address and uh, different approaches proposed by different agencies, you know, the, the working groups um, created sub-working groups to address many of these different approaches and different issues. And one of these, uh, these subgroups uh, undertook looking at the, the, uh, how, to, uh, how to make the housing, typo housing typology information and costing more accessible to not only to the, uh, to the, to the public, to the affected population, but also to those supporting the affected population. And, um, and uh, you know, it's my great pleasure to be here today, as I said, at the launch of this product uh, of one of those working groups, which uh, ended up being the Housing Cost Calculator Working Group. One of the things that, uh, that, that I think is wonderful about this is that the calculator helps to demystify the construction process a lot. And I think one of the, one of the uh, challenges that we always have is, is um, trying to bridge the gap between the engineers and, and the, uh, well, let's say the non-engineers and the affected population who are non-engineers non as well. And I think this, this provides a good avenue to, um, to provide the information and the tools uh, to affected households and those working to support them uh, with the important uh, information and localised information for their own decision making, which then empowers them uh, to, to a larger extent um, to make the right decisions for their own recovery. And you know this tool is designed to be adaptable, and and uh, and and would be easily adapted to other settings and other disasters. Um, even within Nepal, it 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 not only helps if if uh, those those in the field supporting the affected population, but but in terms of agencies uh, quickly and easily being able to um, cost a program or a response, then this tool will also very much help to define some of those cost parameters and, and, uh, and also some of the logistical uh, issues and constraints. One of, the, one of the things I remember about this process was the challenges uh, in terms of calculating and, and um, I guess kind of, kind of uh, using the geographic information of, of transport to, to define costs uh, more accurately. And, and um, you know, the, the difference between uh, getting a truck to carry the steel as a, or, or stone as compared to a mule or 
uh, a, a, a motorbike or the different types of transports, but also the different types of roads or tracks that, that, that may get used in a, in a disaster setting. And I think this, um, this gives, gives room for that, but also has some very powerful, um, uh, uh, as Ramesh was saying, AI type, uh, type facilities in the, uh, behind it to help generate some of, those, uh, some of those costs and some of that information. It gives people a quick comparison, which will, you know, be useful uh, to support their, their decision making, but also give them some flexibility about what they might, um, might decide to do to address their recovery needs. As it, as it grows, as more and more people uh, become um, uh, users of this app, it will be great to see uh, new typologies included and new locations included. And especially, you know, not just Nepal, but regionally and, and globally, you know, these, these locations can be updated and, and uh, information about costs uh, and so on inputted into the system. One of the things that, that I think will be, you know, very useful in Nepal, and I think Ramesh picked up on that as well, is, is its impact on, um, on the building code implementation in Nepal. And there's, there is, uh, there's a lot of scope for how an app like this can not only help to empower decision-making for costs, uh, and but also also help to um, help to encourage certain elements within buildings that will better conform to building code um, to building code requirements as as the building code uh, becomes more regulated within Nepal and within the region. Some of the things that I think you know that the team are working on and will be good to see as it as it comes uh, as it as it uh, develops will be um, how to include retrofitting into into the uh, into the system into the app and um, and you know how to how to localize the information uh, even even further by to make it more accessible to the affected population rather than to engineers specifically or to um, support agencies. Uh, and that would be also to, to how, how do we incorporate, um, you know, local languages into the system um, and, and get away from the, the sort of English basis that we have so far, which was necessarily through the development. So, um, and another, just I'll just I'll leave you just with one other thought as well. Is is um, uh, how you know how is it how can we make the maintenance of this app um, become more uh, more flexible and and um, and less costly? Um, and if if there is a way that that through um, uh, different ways of inputting data uh, that that some of the information could be crowdsourced, and the the maintenance of the of the app itself could be you know not only uh, owned by government but but also owned by the users themselves in terms of uh, in terms of updating prices or or uh, updating. Um, typologies outside of the custom area so so that I mean I, that could be something interesting to look at down the track but I, I think um, I think it is it's just a great honor to be asked to to be a panelist here today uh, it, it's it, for such a such a, uh, a, a large amount of work that that so many organizations have put in to produce this app and it's a it's really a, a one, wondrous to see. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Lauren, for your remarks and feedbacks. Uh, now we are at the uh, at the end of this opening and remarks session. Uh, I would request uh, Mr. Jamie Richardson for his remarks. Uh, Jamie is working as a CRS Global Center and Settlement Technical Advisor and has been supporting the Nepal program since 
2015 Nepal earthquake. He's rich in experiences from various countries across the globe. Uh, he has been very involved in the housing cost calculator process with HRRP and the working group. We have learned a lot from similar basic calculator tool in Nepal and outside. Uh, so I'd like to request Mr. Zemi for his remarks. Over to you, Zemi. Thank you very much and uh, namaste and good afternoon to everybody in Nepal. Um, congratulations on the, uh, on the launch of this app. And I know that there has been a lot of hard work that it has gone into it. It's very complex. There's lots of different levels to this. Um, and I really appreciate this kind of courageous effort because it's a really important piece in the, in the puzzle, which is recovery. And I think we discovered this quite early on in uh, when we were looking in Gorka um, at, at the start of CRS's work, where the focus at that point was very much on the technical component. And it emerged very quickly um, uh, throughout the recovery that this was not enough. It's, it's very good to be working on the engineering aspects, but of course there is the social and the financial aspects that need to be considered as well. I think we moved to the, the, the social aspects quite quickly in terms of things like land rights and eligibility, et cetera. But when it actually came to household budgeting and household financing, that is something that has actually um, taken some time for us to get towards. And maybe as, uh, as Ramesh was mentioning, maybe we, if we could have been doing this a lot earlier on, that, that, might have, that could be a learning from this uh, recovery, um, recovery programming. So, uh, I mean, I think the tool is, is, has many different aspects that are really useful and they've already been mentioned. So I, I'm not gonna go and repeat those already, but a, a couple of additional things that I see has been really important. One thing is about the, the disaster risk reduction um, promotion that this allows, because in the calculation, it does calculate out all the materials that are needed to be able to successfully construct these buildings to a risk reduction standard. And I think that is really important. Obviously, it aligns with building codes, et cetera, but it does promote the, uh, the DRR components of the build. And this can be important to all the stakeholders, not just the householder, but also the vendors, because vendors, I think, are a really important key uh, stakeholder in, in the decision making that households make about, about the house building. Uh, uh, households will go to their vendors and ask for uh, advice about the materials that they should be using, et cetera. So if this tool can be used as a way of providing information, that is also promoting that, those DRR aspects. I think that's really important. Looking forward, one area that I think is, would be very interesting to explore is looking at, especially around uh, the housing finance the strategies households have to make around uh, financial planning and budgeting, and also be thinking about how this may link with the um, housing, uh, housing finance sector. So looking at banks, lending organizations, et cetera, because they would like to see how much a house would cost. They want to see realistic budgeting to know that households can afford what they're building. They are gonna be able to use this to be able to have some level of assurance that the house will be built and can be an asset that can be lent against. So I think this is a really important uh, area that we could be exploring. And especially when we recognize that, um, you know, that in other contexts, there isn't always support for households. I mean, in, in Nepal, it was a fantastic um, um, uh, effort by the donors and government, et cetera, to be able to provide grants and funding for all households. But in lots of contexts in other countries, that is not the case. And most households are having to self-recover. So being able to use this as not just as a tool for organizations to support households, but also as a self-recovery tool, where we may take on a slightly different role in terms of um, you know, our roles in providing social, technical, and financial, uh, financial support. So I think there's, there's, there's a lot can be done. Um, I think that maybe one area to look at also is to be thinking about the sustainability of this tool um, and looking into the future and thinking about are there ways that the private sector could be supporting the financing of this so that it has a sustainable future because, as you mentioned, it, it needs constant maintenance and, and, uh, and updating. So maybe there are links already with the private sector that could be explored to fund this so it has a sustainable future. But just to wrap up, 
um, fantastic. Um, we started trying to make a calculator in Gorka all that, you know, I think it was 2016, 17. Um, and at that time it was all on Excel sheets and, and I was involved in working on that. It was incredibly complex. It really made my brain hurt. So <laughs> I, I, I do appreciate the work and effort that you have um, gone into to produce this, this excellent app and uh, certainly will be promoting it not only here, but in programs regionally and globally as well. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you again and get you for your time. Uh, now, considering the time, uh, let's move to a Q&A session. Uh, I think uh, we have uh, received uh, many questions in chat box. I think uh, some of the questions have already been uh, uh, answered by uh, presenter. Uh, uh, we have received uh, uh, one question. Uh, I am reading some question. We have received one question from Sadia Khan. Can the application be used by the owner themselves or, uh, or only partner? Uh, I think this question has been already been answered by uh, Minar Thapamagar and uh, Minor Thapamagar. Uh, uh, Deepak sir, would you like to uh, uh, add uh, uh, anything for this question? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you for asking the question, Sadia. Uh, the, our application is uh, made for the technical person as well as for anyone who has basic uh, basic software application uh, or mobile, applica mobile application. So it is open for any user from technical person to any layman or any beneficiary uh, who doesn't have much technical knowledge, they can use. So it is open for all with the, with the provided link, any user can use uh, our application in mobile as well as in web, web uh, browser. Thank you. Uh Thank you, Deepak sir, for your quick, res uh, uh, quick response. Uh, uh, now, uh, one of the participants has raised hand, I think. Uh, hello, hello. Can, can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, All right. Um, I just want to ask, is this cost calculator would be applicable in, in a place like this? Like I'm working in a rural municipality. Uh, a uh, bit difficult to imply it uh, in this place. Dibakshi, would you like to answer that one or should I take that one? Uh, sh sure. Uh, you can use our application uh, as we mentioned earlier, like our application is open to 31 <laughs> models at present. So if, if, you, if you are working on the models that our application has from stone in mud motor, uh, to stone in uh, stone in cement mortar or brick masonry in cement mortar or uh, hollow concrete model. If your uh, your uh, your house are in these categories, then you can use our application to calculate the cost of the house. So is in this uh, this this one is just for housing constructions, or it can be used in other any other way. No, at this at this point we have. Uh, uh, our application is for res uh, for the for the construction of residential house uh, house households, load bearing uh, massive buildings only. So it hasn't got the you know the features of working in other other areas. In other areas means like uh, in what areas uh, you mean to say? I mean if if there is a natural calamities like just like landslide or any other in where, mm -hmm. where we need to work on you know. Mm -hmm. So we need to build a wall or something. So will it be effective if we use this kind of uh, applications there just for the cost calculator? Uh, no, at present only for these four different typologies. Uh, it's not for calculating the calculator only for wall like a shear wall or other walls. Uh, oh, it's right. only for the houses that uh, that are present in the application. Okay, sure. I just got that only. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Deepak, sir, for your response. Uh, we have remained a uh, uh, few times for question and uh, Q&A sessions. Uh, I request uh, all the participants uh, 
to uh, raise hand and ask your questions. Uh, one question is from uh, Suman Basyal. Uh, is there option to change the rate as per physical year? Uh, I think it is already been but uh, uh, it is. But uh, for more clarity, I would uh, like to request Mr. Uh, Sachinji uh, for uh, for a quick response. Uh, let me see, can you hear me well uh, currently? Because I have been getting some messages that I am not being able uh, to be here heard. Is my voice clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, for this question, so, uh, how I'd like to tackle this question is that, yes, you can change uh, the cost, cost uh, like you can change the rates as per your need, not only for your, for the fiscal year, but also if you know the rate analysis, like if you know the rate for your place, you can easily change it under the custom sections, or you can also add it into the contribution sections and like deduct it from the total cost uh, from the panel as well. So that is why we have created the uh, cost rate sections as well as uh, in the custom rate sections, if you can uh, like make your own profile in the applications, you can go to the custom rates section and you can choose the custom rates for all the materials that needs to be built uh, a house. You can change uh, the rates for each sections and you can apply uh, those in your part or in your district as well. Uh, I think that is all uh, from my side. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Sachinji, for your response. And another uh, one, uh, from same participant, uh, yeah, is there any different making uh, uh, on account or using with guest icon? Uh, would you like to respond, Sasinji? The, um, so the benefit of making your own account is uh, because all the projects that you have created will remain in your account. So every time you come back to the uh, applications, you will be able to see those projects as well. But if you are logging in from the guest account, you will get all the features. It is not that there is a paid version, it's a free version. You get everything for free over here. So you can like you can create your own projects, but the backdrop of this is uh, this is that you will be only able to see those projects until you are online or until you are logged in with a guest account. As soon as you get logged out or as soon as you close your browser and come back to the panel again, you will not be able to see those projects as a whole in your dashboard. So I prefer you uh, making your own registered account. That way, all the projects that you have created will always be there. And it will always be easier for uh, engineers. It will all be, always be easier for people who are working in this sector to come back to, uh, uh, to the projects, see, the, uh, see how the projects have been done. We can make amendments to your projects as well over there. So instead of uh, like making one uh, project uh, from the guest account, it, it will be much more uh, better if you can make your own registered account, you can go, you can like make your, uh, the registration process is pretty simple. We are just asking for your email address. That is only so that you can log in with a unique username. Uh, we are not asking for anything else. Like if you see other forms, you, they're asking your phone numbers and everything. Uh, nothing is needed over there. Just your email address and your password and you'll be ready to go with your login account. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh... We have received a question from uh, Radha Burma. Uh, the question is, are you working, engaging with Yandi RRM as a tool they could potentially use for response in the future or GPZ to help them plan for remaining housing reconstruction? Just wondering, what does this mean for response in the future? Uh, uh, for this question, a quick response from uh, Deepak sir. Thank you, Radha, uh, Radha ji, for uh, uh, raising these wonderful questions. Uh, at present, we haven't uh, uh, coordinated with NDRMA about this uh, application, and it's it's used in used by the NDRMA. But uh, we will surely uh, work with the NDRMA so that they can be they can use our application. Uh, I mean, we can collaboratively work with them uh, to solve the to to solve issues and and uh, our application could be used in the reconstruction process. Thank you, Lasviji. Uh, thank you, Deepak, sir. I think uh, for this question, I, I would request Minar, sir, uh, for more uh, clarification. Thank you very much. Uh, so this is very uh, important uh, question. Uh, so I would just like to answer in very short is, uh, uh, after having this uh, working group uh, run and successfully launched this, uh, 
calculator or the tool. Uh, so uh, this is the first milestone. And while working together in developing this tool, we have been consulting with a National Reconstruction Authority as well as uh, some of the um, uh, some of the representative from um, Ministry of Urban De Development that is through building CLPIUs. In future, uh, we will be again uh, kind of uh, developing and uh, improvising this tool by adding more high housing typologies, trying to uh, solve the uh, uh, field solution from the ground. And that is where we uh, start putting it with uh, NDRMA. And also to see how this tool uh, can be used widely in other recovery and reconstruction process. For remaining recovery and reconstruction process, yes, we will go for a significant field level testing as well as uh, its uh, application through the ministries or through the technical staff who are still available in uh, available on the ground. So in future, yes, uh, we're looking at the sustainability of the tool. We will be engaging more with NDRMA, um, with Ministry of Urban Development, um, uh, district authorities and local government to see how we can scale the use of the tool as well as how we can incorporate other typologies. Even we were exploring like if uh, we, we, uh, we think this tool can be again expand its scope to uh, think for emergency shelter construction during emergency that could be kind of a next um, uh, next ambition for the working group to expand and work on it thank you thank you minar sir for your contributions uh, we have here uh, as announced earlier we have here uh, deputy director of the central project implementation unit building under yanare uh, mr jaffar singh biswakarma sir uh, I would like to request Jaffar sir for his concluding remarks. Then we have a vote of thanks. Over to you, Jaffar sir. I got the information that Jaffar sir is in another meeting, so he is not uh, available. Uh, but Bipin from CLPI building, uh, he is here, so he can speak on behalf of CLPI building and Jaffar sir. Bipin sir. Okay. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, Rosmiji, and uh, all respected panelists and all the participants. Uh, actually, due to several meetings, parallel meetings here at the NRA, uh, I also joined later uh, at the end of the program, so I couldn't capture all the things that happened to the uh, what happened to this program. But uh, as I know, um, uh, the applications that uh, that uh, that uh, SRRP have developed. Uh, it's quite uh, useful for us. And uh, regarding the, its implementations, I think uh, from CLPI side, uh, we think that we have to train to our engineers uh, on these applications also. So um, actually, uh, uh, around uh, 10, 15 days before also, we discussed with uh, SRRP uh, regarding this training to engineers. but. Mm, due to some uh, problems here uh, of engineers and uh, due to the end of the fiscal years, we are not, uh, we are not in a position to uh, provide that training to the engineers. But uh, after, after a couple of weeks, weeks we can plan a training uh, regarding this. Mm, I think this is the message that uh, Jaffar sir uh, asked me to share with, uh, with all, the, all, the, all the teams and um, especially as RRP. And I, I don't have many things to go because um, I don't know many things about this and we'll definitely uh, sit with Deepak Ji and uh, Los Miji and team uh, on these applications and on, uh, on this document. So after that, we will we'll provide our feedbacks and uh, suggestions uh, on these also. And uh, thank you, thank you very much uh, all for participation and thank you very much, especially Los Miji, um, to ask me for a few, few words. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vivian, sir, for your words and remarks. Uh, now we'll move to the final stage of both of thanks from our uh, national uh, technical coordinator, Mr. and Ms. Bhuvneshwari uh, Parajuli. Uh, I would like to request a Bhuvneshwari man for a vote of thanks and conclude the program. Okay, thank you, Lakshmiji. Namaste and good afternoon, everyone. I see um, people from uh, Australia and from USA, so it's good morning and good, uh, good evening as well uh, to you all. So it's my pleasure to have been asked to give you a vote of thanks in this webinar. 
Uh, I, on the behalf of HRRP, would like to extend uh, this vote of thanks to uh, both the presenters for sharing the important and wonderful works today. We are also grateful to all the three eminent personality, Lauren, Jamie, and Ramesha, for sharing this experience in the development journey of house cost calculator with their very encouraging remarks. We would also like to express our sincere thanks to the uh, Deputy Project Director Japar Shah and his team, though he was not present, but on behalf of Tiju Bipinji uh, for his gracious presence and inspired by his great words. We also would like to acknowledge our gratitude to uh, particularly NC, CIS, and HRRP, and other uh, technical working group members like PIN, Build Chains, Build Up Nepal, for all the hard work and the support which made this application uh, this possible. And uh, as the presenter itself had said, and also um, by Ramishar, uh, and the Lauren. So we had like uh, the development of housing cost calculator. We have just began, and uh, we have initiated with these four type building typologies um, uh, that are fed at the moment in this tool. Uh, but there's a huge potentiality uh, of expanding this tool, and even at present, we can use this tool. Uh, beyond this uh, 14 earthquake affected districts or 32 earthquake affected districts um, limiting uh, to the uh, housing typology that are in the tool itself. So, and we know that lots to be done and uh, we require a lot of uh, like collaborative efforts. So we'd like to, we are definitely going to extend this uh, technical working group um, uh, to engage more and more uh, partner organization and interested people, uh, not only from Nepal, but also uh, from the region and also across the globe. Um, so, but, so in this regard, in this context, what I would like to request uh, uh, to all the like participants to convey and just a request to be a part of this uh, technical working group so we can work together, uh, we can share our experiences and any type of engagement in this particular, uh, in this uh, working group would be highly appreciated and highly beneficial. So with this uh, words, I thank you everyone being with us, uh, like, and it has been a great pleasure hearing you all. And thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to conclude uh, this whole uh, webinar with this uh, vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, everyone, uh, for your time. Uh, now I would like to conclude this program. Thank you all.